Hi guys, here's another one. We've got this Hoover Dynamic Next condenser dryer. Um, this is the original listing off the internet. Um, the seller was offering for £25. And um, just show you here, just some of the images listed and states that um, they're valid for less than three years and it takes time to warm up, selling as parts only, as this problem with the buttons apparently. So I managed to get it for £22.50 pence. and here you can see I've collected it, to show you around it, it's pretty tidy. Sure, inside here, inside the drum, bits of uh, fluff inside here. Not much. That's the uh, fluff filter. If you look down here, as usual, always a buildup of dust when it's not being correctly maintained. You see, there's quite a lot of dust in here. And right at the bottom there, that's the actual condenser unit. Let me just show you that. Just pop this bottom cover off and undo these two. Um, clips here. This is the actual condenser unit. Show inside the housing. Not too bad inside there. Gonna give it a clean anyway. Just pop this on the bench. And as you can see, this filter has not been maintained. There's a lot of fluff around it. it obviously, this is the reason why it wouldn't heat up because um, it's completely blocked. You're supposed to clean it every month, once a month. But as you can see here, that quite clearly hasn't happened. And just show you inside here. It's, there's vents inside here, which you can't see because it's completely blocked. As it's not been cleaned, it just needs a washout. But this will take more than a washout. You can normally just run this under the tap. Let me just see if I can pop this camera inside and show you. A little close up of inside, as you can see, it's completely blocked. These vents are completely blocked up. So, I'll just pop this unit back in for the minute while I'm still um, assessing. And uh, to show you here, the water tank on these is actually on the door, which I think is a quite a good idea. They're usually on the top catches all the condensed water pumped up to there so first thing as usual I'm going to check the plug for damage all the way to the machine and uh, there's no damage on this one so I think it's safe to uh, connect it to the mains so you can see me plug it into me extension cord with the circuit breaker and then what I'm going to do, powers up nicely. They stated that there's a problem with the buttons. Let's check in that. Yep, yeah, that doesn't seem to be any problem. I think that's the um, timer. So I'll switch it off, switch it back on again. Now when I press start, nothing happens. But at this stage, I could start to smell burning and the drum's not turning. So, unplugged it hastily. And uh, when I open the door, as you can see, smoke inside. So quite clearly, there's fluff on the heating element and the drums are turning. So we've got a problem here. So what I'm gonna have to do is dismantle the unit. It's just three uh, retaining screws on the back for the hood, which I'm removing here. Just fast forward that for you because I struggled with it. And I've got the hood off. Let me just show you inside top of the machine as usual there's always fluff in these things for some reason or another I've seen worse See, there's a lot of buildup of fluff in here which can cause to dry fires if it gets excessive drum turns all right as you see me rotating manually so I'm just going to dismantle 
the unit here. Let's fast forward this section because it was quite a long process. Just going to take the front cover off first. Or the front panel. And I'll just stop here just to show you, as you can see here, a fair build up of dust inside here also. Show you inside the back of the control panel, build up a fluff inside there also. So, just continue to dismantle the unit and um, quite struggle with this spot here. And I'm just turn the background. What I've got to do is remove this uh, fan blower housing, blows the heat up to the drum. Let's remove that. And you can see the heating element on the back there and the fan. So I'll just turn the unit back around. I've undone all the screws and I'm just removing the drum, which was very difficult. And you can see me just taking the drum out. Just put that to one side for a minute. I'll just show you here. There's quite a lot of fluff build up inside here. So what I'm going to use is just back it all up, back it all out. Let's get my Henry Hoover in there and give it a good clean. Just get rid of all these bits of fluff. And you can see here, quite a lot of fluff in it. This is where the goes down into the condenser unit and this is the gaskets uh, for the front cover always a build up of dust around there the drum rotates around this section so with the other parts I'm just going to give them a blast with me jet blast get rid of all the dirt and dust as you can see here because there's no electrics on these parts so I'll just give it a blast just find this the best way to, to clear the unit just going to give the inside of the drum a blast as well because for some reason there's quite a few bits of fluff inside there as well and this is the gasket that goes down to the condenser it separates the condenser from the front door as you can see there front panel sorry let's give that a blast also get rid of all that dirt and dust right so this is the actual condenser unit which is completely uh, blocked this is the main problem for no heat. Uh, the drum's not turning, I'll have to get to that at some stage later. But this will have to be cleaned out. It's just full of fluff. I don't think it was ever emptied in the three years the previous owner said they had it. So as you can see there, I use my jet blaster what, to Get all the mock out and you can see all the dirt coming out. Just fast forward this because it was quite a long process. You can usually clean this with the just off a watering can or a tap, but this is just too heavily congested. Let me show you here that's some of the mock that was inside, just build up a fluff. So I'm just gonna give it a blast a bit more, get as much as I can. And this is the fluff filter which I've blasted there. So this is the motor capacitor. I'm assuming this is not working because the motor does not turn. And this is a brushless motor. This is very rarely that they actually stop working. So what I've did is shorted the terminals on this capacitor because they do hold a lot of voltage. I'm using a pair of pliers to remove the spade connectors. And here you can see me just undoing the nut for the capacitor. It'll be very careful while handling this because they do hold a lot of voltage. And I've managed to find one on the internet for £10.45 and I've ordered it, just go wait for it to arrive. And uh, it's arrived, to show you here. That's the new unit there in the bag. I'm just going to test the old unit. That's the new one, just give it a test. As you can see, we've got some homes reading there.
from, from the u new unit and I'll just test the old unit and as you can see there nothing let's try it again it's nothing at all so this unit is dead uh, the weather's a bit crap today so um, I'm gonna have to finish it off inside because it's snowy So what I'm going to do is fit the new capacitor which is here and it just bolts onto this bracket which is part of the uh, motor which is a nut and spring washer from the previous capacitor and then I'm just going to give it a tighten up you can use the spanner, I'm just using a pair of pliers just to give it a final tighten as you can see there so now that that's uh, secured, it's just a matter of putting these terminals back on, doesn't matter which way they go around. I'll just show you here, it's just two spade connectors. And it's just reconnecting them, like so. Get a little close up there. And uh, here you can see that's the nut, got it nice and tight with the spring washer and the terminals. So what I'm going to do is uh, reconnect the controls. Here you can see I took a photo of the wiring diagram before I disconnected the panel, which is here. You can see the old picture's got still got the fluff on it. So what I'm doing is reconnecting the control panel. And I'm just going to temporarily prop that on the front of the machine. Just put the Temporarily putting the fixing screws in. And here I'm just going to close the uh, door switch. Just press it in. And then all I'm going to do here is connect the uh, sensors. I'll fast forward some of this just to speed up the video because it's quite long. So I'm just connecting the sensors here. And this is the uh, heater, heating element. I'm just gonna put that on the back of the machine. Switch the machine on. And you can see. So far so good. And it's got this error code which indicates that the heater element is not connected. So what I've done, I've switched the machine off. And here you can see me just reconnecting the heater element temporarily. And I'll switch the unit back on once again, and there's no errors this time. So hit start button. And as you can hear there, the rope just spinning. It's working again. So that's successful. So at this stage, all I've got to do is reassemble the machine. And here you can see um, I've got all the parts which I've cleaned, laid out, and nice and dry now. Uh, just got to refit them while I assemble the whole unit. So I'll just switch it off. And um, I'll just time lapse this because it's quite a long job. If you have a look on the clock on the cooker on the right hand side, you'll see it took about two hours because um, I had to reroute right wiring and what's not. Put a couple of the wires in the wrong way, but I rectified it. Okay, this is the uh, fluff filter which I cleaned a couple of days ago. Let's show you that. That goes in here, little slot there. And this is the housing for the condenser. Let's give you a look inside now, it's nice and clean. Just show you down the back there. It's nice and clean in there now. And this is the condenser. As you can remember before, it was completely blocked. I've jet washed it and uh, cleared it out. Just show you here. 
is completely clean now, completely free of dust. As I said before, this is supposed to be cleaned once a month, at least. And just show you inside, I've just popped the camera inside, you can see some of the residue, as it's still wet, not quite dried out. So that's the condenser unit, let will show you another angle there, see it's nice and clean inside there, absolutely filthy before. Reinsert that. And this locks in with these two tabs here, blue tabs. And then this bottom cover just fits on here like so. And uh, I'll show you here. I'll remove the filter, the fluff filter. I'll just show you down there, it was completely filthy before, but it's nice and spotless to clean now. And just reinsert the filter which uh, is supposed to clean per cycle every time you use the machine you're supposed to clean that so it's just a matter of plugging it in giving it a test i'll just plug it back in again i'll just get this uh damp jumper wet jumper took that in there 40 minutes and you can see the drum turning now where it wasn't turning before you can actually hear it as well it was just smoking last time and uh, that's complete now not quite finished but uh, to show you there nice and dry and you can see the water what it's collected in the door just empty that the water reservoir Okay, so I'll just show you what the unit looked like before. That's the housing for the condenser, and this is what it looks like now. And here we've got the housing for the fluff filter, what it looked like before, and this is what it looks like now. And this is the actual condenser unit itself, before and after. And just show you the back end of it what it looked like before don't think this unit was ever clean since uh, day one as it's completely full of fluff it's supposed to be cleaning that once a month well that pretty much does it thanks for watching once again and uh, please subscribe